How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mass Beer Reviews back with a little bit of mystery beers. Not just a little bit of mystery beers, a lot of mystery beers. Three mystery beers. Um, yeah, we're going to do three mystery beers at one time. Why? Because I want to, that's why. Um, and for a couple of other reasons. They all boil down to me wanting to. Um, I was always curious to see what it would be like if I could get like three correct and when i say correct you know within the ballpark um you know rarely do you guess the actual beer itself so i guess that would be your kind of top ceiling of being correct um and it's hard to get mystery beers in general correct i've been on a little bit of a poopy streak so i've always wanted to do a kind of a, a you know back to back to back to see if i can accomplish that and the other reason is to see how i do with a back to back to back mystery beer because, you know, uh, anything you drink beforehand is obviously going to affect your palate and what you taste and, and things like that. It's kind of like sometimes if you eat a donut and drink your coffee, you're like, oh my god, my coffee doesn't have enough sugar in it. No shit, you're lucky to eat fucking sugar. That's why. Anyway, mystery beer is much the same. Um, like I said, not that I've been really good as of late. I've been kind of poopy with mystery beers. But it'll be fun. It'll be a fun little test to do. And we'll see what's what. So, first things first. Preconceived notions. I'm going to go smallest to this 16 ounce can to a bottle. Why? Because in my brain, this is probably going to be something lighter. This is going to be something like a hazy, and this will probably be something that's darker. It's probably going to be the other way around. That's your preconceived notion going into it. So we'll see what's what. So hopefully I keep track of these. I don't screw these up, mix these up like I did on my mystery uh, green and Julius thing, which I totally butchered, but I got right hypothetically because I thought I was wrong, but I wasn't wrong because I switched the bottles and blah 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 anyway because there's totally bottles in that in those mystery beers anyway so let's dive into these first things first these two come courtesy of max he dropped these off hand delivered these just before christmas and that other one there comes courtesy of carson thank you very much brother he actually uh sent me off a bunch of beer mails in a row leading up to christmas and one of them had some mystery beers in them so i'm kind of pumped to see what's what so what we're gonna do we'll open them we'll take a look we'll do the nose We'll go through the whole gamut and we'll see what's what. So let's give this one a pour. I'll give you guys an idea. See, this is where the preconceived notion jumps a shark because, yeah, we're dealing with a big old, what I assume to be an imperial stout. I mean, look at that. So, I mean, we're going to go in that order. We're not going to kind of mix things up and go from there. So, yeah, we're looking at, it could be a porter uh, or something along those lines. But first off, we're looking at something that looks big, bold, and rich. This middle one. Let's see what's what we have here. Two for two on the dark beers. This one looks a little bit lighter, not nearly as dense as that one. That one pours pretty much like motor oil. Um, this one comes off a little bit lighter, so this could be your kind of like just a base porter or a really rich dark brown ale, maybe even a Cascadian ale. Over here, I'm getting kind of imperial stout, rich, deep, dark vibes that poured way, way darker than what this one did over here. And last but not least, let's jump into this little bottle here. Here's these weird kind of tops on these, so I don't know if I want to look at the cap because I don't know if it's going to give much away. I looked anyway. It didn't give anything away. And then we have oh, 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 oh. here we go. This is going to be a hard one. Three for three. I, you know what? This goes I, I, have, I did not plan this obviously because they're mystery beers. I have no idea what they are. Oh. Knee jerk from a distance. I mean this is dark as dark could be. So I'm guessing from distance, kind of like a big, rich imperial stout over here. Even by the head, if you guys can actually see, it looks like um, kind of like a more fluffy, creamy kind of beer, maybe kind of a uh, porter or even kind of a, like a milk stout, um, a milk porter, a sweet stout, or even a Cascadian dark ale. Over here, I'm thinking maybe either an imperial stout or an aged barley wine or a blend of like a a quarter or something like that there's something about this that's a little bit different the head did not have much retention to it so it might have hit a barrel or something like that so yeah we're off to a uh, very curious dark beer start tonight so let's get a nose hmm i think this one might have touched a little bit of spirit to be honest with you Yeah, I'm getting um, kind of like Russian Imperial Stout vibes off this. Not necessarily because it's uh, like a bittering kind of Imperial Stout. It smells like an Imperial Stout, but it has this big cherry note to it. That's why I said it kind of, I think it might have touched the spirit because it has this cherry note. Now, I get a lot of those rich cherry notes from Russian Imperial Stouts, even if they haven't touched the barrel. So that's the whole reason why I'm getting those kind of vibes over here. But yeah, Imperial Stout, I'm guessing, you know, 11% on the nose. 
probably I'm, I, I kind of want to back away from the barrel and just say it's maybe a Russian Imperial Stout right around there. But that's just it knows. We'll get further into it when we actually take a sip. Let's go in the middle here. Ooh. Okay. That's a Cascadian Dark Ale. Or Hoppy I, a Dark IPA is what that is. Hmm. Okay. This one has a little bit of molasses vibes going on it. Yeah, that's not unmistakable. That's I'm guessing this came from this room has very much like Beezle Bubby. What are, what's the other one they have? It's not the bigger one. Pappy's Pappy's Porter kind of vibes going on right there. Yeah, these two are gonna battle it out for whether they're barreled or not. Yeah, this one has like a little bit of molasses, maybe even a touch of a, a smoky characteristic. So it could be a barrel, could be a barrel char, could be a whiskey barrel, maybe some kind of like, um, uh, you know, Canadian whiskey or kind of a uh, scotch kind of whiskey, something like that over there. But I'm going knee jerk reaction. This one's barrel aged, this one's a Russian Imperial Sot, and this is probably Pappy's Porter, is what I'm saying. So stop in this sucker right here. Cheers. Oh. It's gotta be some of these Russian Imperial Stout, right? Mm. Rich, chocolatey, creamy, bittering. But it feels like you're getting more bittering. You're getting bittering from a hop. You're getting bittering from a roasted malt. That didn't touch a barrel. I don't think it did. I think it's just somebody's base Russian Imperial Stout. pretty fucking good one to be perfectly honest with you too a little bit of the metallic astringency in there you know i don't think it's that high in ebv it has this rich lusciousness to it but it doesn't i feel like it's sub 10 like all the flavors in here kind of remind me a little bit of like a 10 fitty but if it, it was a 10 fitty it was a bit older now the can size all that stuff kind of kind of pushes you in that direction of a 10 fitty but i don't think it's that because it's not as intense because we did 1050 on my um uh, online bottle share it was very intense very sweet very bittering more than i remember if this is that then i believe it has a little bit of age on it but even though i do get a little evaporative alcohol in here i still don't think we're getting the double digits on the abv let's dive into this cascadian dark or hoppy porter whatever you want to call it yes Okay, it's somebody's version of a Cascadian Dark Ale or Hoppy Black IPA. It's actually a Black IPA. I mean, it's 6-1. Um, it's definitely not Pappy's Porter. It's definitely not, um, uh, what, what did I say, Luscious? Um, that one, or Beezlebub. Why? Because I don't think it has that weed component that Kimmich loves so much in two. It's got a silver pull tab, so it's definitely not an alchemist beer. But it's somebody's... Um, I keep wanting to say Cascadian Dark Ale. It's somebody's uh, black IPA. Ooh, what is this? I have no idea what this one is. Mmm. Mouthfeel in this beer is a bonkers good. Hmm. Mouthfeel is amazing. So there's something to it. There's a little bit of bittering in there. Wow. This is really hard. I thought I was going to get like a, a, a mixture of beers. Maybe, you know, hopefully like a little bit of a lager, maybe a hazy, <clears throat> maybe an Imperial Stout. To get all dark beers across the board is actually... I wonder what the odds are of all the mystery beers that I get, the chances of them being dark. And the fact that they're all different can sizes and end up being dark beers is quite a fucking random accomplishment for me to kind of just pick them off. Hmm. So. I don't know what that is. It's going to be hard. This one, I'm teetering on whether it just touched the barrel real quick. Because there's a dryness there. There's a bitterness beyond. It's probably just hops and, and, and roasted malt. 
The mouthfeel over here is so luscious, I want to call this a milk stout, although I'm not getting any kind of lactose. So I'm going to call this an oatmeal stout. Maybe somebody's kind of Russian. Uh, this is, uh, it could, these both could be Russian Imperial stouts. So this is like a Russian Imperial oatmeal stout, somebody's version of that. Whereas this is a bit more traditional of a Russian Imperial stout. And then over here, so now I get a little bit of whiskey vibes off this one. Cascading dark. I don't want to sit here. I don't want to toil through these all that long. So I think I can go back and forth for like 15 minutes and kind of beep and bop. Russian Imperial stuff that hit a spirit barrel real quick. Real quick. Um, uh, let's go 10%. Um, somebody's Hoppy IPA. Six and change. Um, oatmeal stout. Somebody's like super... See, I still want to go lactose on it because it has such a creamy mouthfeel to it. Somebody's oatmeal stout. A little touch of bittering. Done and done. Um, so what did I say over here? Ten. I'm forgetting the shit. Six and a half. Um... Eight and change. Russian Imperial touched the barrel. The hoppy IPA, six and a half. And then, what did I say? Eight and change. Oatmeal stout. So let's see what we have going on here. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one to see how I either did really well or did really poopy. So, let's give that the old unwrap. And first off, we have... We have Outer Light Brewing Company. This is a blend, a blended Imperial Maple Porter aged in bourbon and bourbon maple syrup barrels. I didn't really get much maple in there. 9.4, so I called it 10. So I wasn't far off in the ABV. Either. Imperial Maple Porter. Um, it, it's kind of like a Russian Imperial Stout for me. There's a bit of bittering in there. And it comes off more cherry-like than I originally got off the nose. But it's really good. Let's put it that way. We're talking about, um, uh, yeah, maple. So it's a maple porter that, again, is a bourbon barrel and bourbon maple syrup barrel aged. I'm not getting a ton of maple off of it, but it's more Russian Imperial stout that hit a bourbon barrel. So I'm um, 100 okay with what I said on that one over there. Boop, 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 boop. Come on, you son of a bitch. I'm curious to see what this one is. <laughs> Could be a this could be because this is Max and this has very Fox Farmy vibes on it. Let's put it that way. So we'll see what this sucker has. There we go. No, it's not Fox Farm. Uh, oh, it's Treehouse. This Treehouse. That is Treehouse. This is Raven with a black IPA from Treehouse. And the ABV on this. Ba -ba -la -ba -ba. Do we get an ABV in this? I do not think we get an ABV. Let's see if it's on the bottom here. Um, no. Okay, so Raven, Black IPA, does not have an ABV, so what did I say, six and a half on this one? That one was probably the easiest of the bunch. There really wasn't much to hide there. And last but not least, Carson's Beer. Let's see what this sucker has. This is the one I was a little bit more confused about. I could be totally wrong on this one. Where did I go? Oatmeal Stout around eight and change. Um, being from Florida, this could be a copper, very much cocktail vibes on this. I think I said that with one of the other mystery beers they had from him. I don't believe it is a cocktail beer because I believe they have art on their necks. Oh, this is a homebrew. Okay. There you go. I like this, man. I like this. I like it. He's there. He says it's a chocolate rye stout. Okay. That rye makes sense then. Um, that rye makes sense because it was had this little kind of bittering component on it. That's your rye stout. Uh, this was made at 7%, so I wasn't too far off in the ABV. And he said here, cheap trick doing homebrew as a mystery, but I wanted a 100% honest shredding. This is my first... Uh, b bottled? Oh, bottled stout. Uh, high po uh, proportion, 9% chocolate rye. Hopefully it's carbed. Actually, it's quite... Well, that's what I mean. I had no point that I think it was a homebrew. Uh, so it was done really well. And what did I say? Somebody's oatmeal? Oatmeal? That Really? And I went oatmeal sat on this. I'm, I'm curious what else is in here. You said it's 9% chocolate rye. I'm curious to see what else is in here. 
you definitely have to let me know. There has to be oats in here. The mouthfeel was absolutely perfect. It's exactly where I want um, my mouthfeels to go with a lot of these beers. I'm blown away by that not being some kind of like added component. It has to be a soft amount of a, of a ton of oats in there because the way the mouthfeel comes off. So I'm totally 100% Actually, one, 100% blown away. I didn't fuck it up completely. And two, I'm pretty okay with everything it said. I mean, you know, I went um, 10% Russian Imperial Stout. That touched a spirit barrel over here. I went 9.4. And it's uh, the maple is what I missed on this. But is they called it an Imperial Maple Porter. It is Russian Imperial Stout through and through. And it did hit the bourbon barrel. I said black IPA. Six and a half. I'll look up. Raven, as far as the ABV goes, I looked it up and we're done with this. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm spot on with that. And I said somebody's um, oatmeal, oatmeal stout, you know, over here. Um, had a little bit of kind of a bittering component to it. Like I said, I believe that was coming from hops and I believe it was coming from a roasted malt. It was probably a combination of those chocolate malts, hops, and that rye. Um, didn't get a ton of rye on it. Um, I have a hard time with rye beer, so that's no, no surprise for me, but I thought that was it was really good, dude. Like honestly, like probably, like I didn't go. Oh, this is homebrew or whatever. Car perfectly. Mouth feels awesome. I'm a fan. So there you go. Fun little mystery beer jaunt down the books. That was cool. I thought I was gonna butcher this. I thought it was gonna be a hundred percent shit show. Let's put it this way. So this is Saturday. The what is this today? The fourth or fifth or something like that. It's the first Saturday of NFL playoffs, and I'm like, okay, it's halftime of the Bills game. I'm like, I want to do a couple beer reviews. I have a ton of mystery beers. I'm like, okay, I'll just do a bunch of mystery beer reviews. And I sat down and I'm looking at. Them, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm like, I'm gonna do all of these at one time because um, I've wanted to do it for a while. And honestly, I think it went pretty well. So yeah, let's talk about it. This is one of the better maple barrel aged, bourbon barrel aged imperial porters I've had as of late. Yes, even if you kind of drop it into the old Russian Imperial Stout range. I think it's pretty damn easy stuff. Probably one of the better can barrel aged kind of <sighs> non-breweries I've never heard of before, right? I've never heard of these guys before. Outer Light. Uh, pretty damn good stuff. I mean, this is black IPAs. I can get down with them if they're done really well. This is done really well, so we're not dealing with anything super fucking um, super surprising here. Treehouse. And probably one of the better homebrews I've had. Um, so oddly enough, I'd love to put this up for homebrew Wednesday, but it's going to go up for mystery beer Monday. That's what you get. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Mystery beers are the funnerest of all the funnerest. Uh, if you did, didn't anywhere in between down there, if you want to talk about it, um, if you would like to contribute to mystery beers, the only way I can do them is through you guys sending me beers. You're more than welcome to reach out to me, massivebeers at gmail.com. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, just type massive beers into Google. If you want to check me out doing the podcasting thing where I talk about to a bunch of breweries. Dean from Treehouse. Um, none of these guys I've talked to yet. Um, but if you want to check out uh, podcasting stuff, type in Beer Massive. You can check that out. And hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed some mystery beers, some Treehouse, some homebrew, some new brewery time. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>